We all laugh when we manage uh, to block. Uh, we celebrate our successful block and uh, want to block more to make our opponents uh, afraid of us. But we also make a lot of mistakes on the block, uh, which I will talk about. When I played in Russia, I experienced uh, firsthand uh, what a good Russian block is uh, with players who are over 2 meters uh, tall and have a 360 reach in the jump. A block that is aggressive high with the player's hands uh, far behind the net. Just a solid uh, disciplined block. Uh, but today I'm not going to talk about how to build the most effective uh, single block or double block. I'm going to focus on the mistakes, the temptations and other inappropriate things we do on the block. The moves and uh, thoughts uh, that keep us uh, from being uh, better blockers. I'm sure some of these mistakes will be close uh, to your heart as well. It's not just about young volleyball players or novice players that make these mistakes and are impatient on the block. When we are playing uh, a match or at uh, practice, we can't expect to block all the attacks. The attacker usually has an advantage over the block. Even with a triple block, uh, we can uh, cover the whole court and uh, block every attack. Then we get impatient on the block. Imagine the situation. One time my outside hitter is hitting the diagonal, so I think to myself, next time I'm going to block his diagonal. He sees my attempt and on the next attack he hits the line, so I'll react to that and block his line again on the next attack. In the end uh, it means I react to every attack he makes, uh, jumping from side to side, uh, the defense behind me not knowing where to stand. Sure you have to be aggressive on the block, uh, want to block, uh, but on the other hand, uh, even on the block, you have to have a strategy, not be impatient. That's why uh, professional teams study their opponents and even player when on the single block has a given task and can't do whatever he wants. A second similar mistake is jumping on the block too early. Either this is uh, due to our bad estimation or we believe uh, we are jumping high and we can still block the attacker. And actually by jumping on the block early we are telling the attacker where we are going to block, uh, where we don't uh, want to let his uh, attack go and we are helping him. If there is a good hitter on the other side of the net uh, he will look uh, at the block before his attack. And if we jump before on block uh, we are letting him know about us. Uh, he can change his mind and hit in the different direction where our block isn't. Also because we are on the block early our block can be used by attacker either playing for the block out with the goal of getting the ball to bounce uh, to the outside of the court or play for fingertips to bounce the ball far out of the court. So don't give uh, the attacking players these chances and wait with your block. Another typical mistake we make on the block is not reading the attacker. We just decide to jump out at a certain spot uh, like where the coach told us uh, before the game. And that's it for us. On every block uh, we should adapt to the specific conditions. Uh, sometimes the set may be short, other times the hitter will run from the outside of the court. With each block uh, we should react the attacker's thoughts and movements. Uh, watch his movements, uh, try to put ourselves in his skin. If I have uh, blocked him uh, twice in a row to the line, will he hit uh, the line again in the third time? If the ball is 2 meters from the net, uh, does it make sense for me to block his sharp diagonal? Or if he has a low set uh, that's barely over the net, is it appropriate for me to jump up uh, to block at most? These and other questions uh, should be asked uh, not only before the game, but also during the game. Undisciplined on the double block. Uh, when I talk to Vladimir Alekno, who won the Olympics with the Russian national team, about how it is possible that the Russian block has been such a great weapon uh, for decades, uh, he replied, We are very dedicated to the block. Uh, we have high players. But more important is our discipline on the block. We teach uh, players from a young age uh, to be disciplined. Uh, and if you look at the best uh, teams in the world, you will see the, they play similarly. They are disciplined on the double block. It doesn't happen to them that on high set uh, the opposite jumps up on the block with the intention of uh, blocking the line because he thinks uh, that's uh, where the attack is going to go. And the blocker on the other hand uh, jumps up and uh, moves his hand uh, to a sharp diagonal because he just uh, sees uh, the attack uh, coming on the diagonal. If you were to look at this block uh, you would see that uh, 2 meter gap uh, in it. No coach would be happy about that and especially the defense in the field would have a lot of troubles uh, defending uh, this attack. If you are not disciplined on the block, uh, if possible compact uh, with a jump at the same time and rigid hand, again we are helping the offensive player. We reduce our chances of a successful block and uh, destroy the potential work of our defense in the field. 
Not resisting temptation when uh, choosing the wrong block spot uh, is one of the common mistakes uh, we make on the block too. I know it myself. Uh, sometimes I have seen an offensive player try to hit the line. I originally intended to block diagonally, but when I saw the movement of the attackers and his uh, planned attack uh, down the line, I tried to close the line with at least one hand. I spread my arms out, I was over the net like an eagle, one hand blocking the line and other on the diagonal. I wanted to block him at all costs, even though I wasn't in the right place. You see the same thing with top players too. Late flying down a single block on an opposite attack and still trying to block the line. Or a small setter jumps on a one-handed block and wants to block a sharp diagonal. You can certainly find some uh, great actions on uh, YouTube where these players uh, manage to block uh, one-handed. But that's the bare minimum of all actions and uh, attempts uh, where we try to resist the temptation and block in the wrong place. So my advice to you is don't try to block the attack uh, next to you when you are not in the right spot uh, when blocking. Also trust your defense and believe in uh, team defensive work. Poor hand position is a common mistake on the block too. If we were talking about uh, improper blocking, uh, you can see many girls' fingers together. I get it. On the block, we get hit in the hands, in the fingers, so it can be painful. And when we have our fingers together, there is a less risk of getting hit in the fingers and then our fingers won't hurt. Or again with the boys, I often see their hands uh, spread apart where they could fit two volleyball between their hands. Even these uh, little things uh, limit us on the block and reduce the possibility of a successful block. Therefore, when practicing a block, uh, also focus on uh, keeping your hands uh, outstretched, uh, fingers spread, uh, thumbs uh, should almost be touching, uh, your hands and fingers should be as rigid as possible, so that your block uh, minimally slows down the opponent's hit. Footwork issues. Uh, when I watch uh, some volleyball players, I see how they have uh, problems with their blocking uh, technique. Um, I don't just mean the blocking itself, uh, but especially the moves on the block and uh, footwork. They misjudge the distance to the ball and choose the wrong technique uh, to move. Um, some blockers uh, move side steps uh, almost all the way across the net. And side steps over a longer distance is always slower than a crossover. For many players, uh, footwork is not important in practice. Uh, they mainly want to uh, jump high and their hands will already block the ball. Yet without the good footwork, you can count on a good block. Uh, you can fly uh, through every block uh, bounce in one spot and end uh, two meters away from your bounce spot. The smaller the distance uh, between your bounds and uh, impact, uh, the more likely you are going to block. Uh, not to mention, you'll also jump much higher. Then we also have a mistake that will cost us an uh, immediate point uh, mistake, which is against the volleyball rules. This is a touching the net on the block. Because we are close to the net uh, when we block, uh, it uh, happens uh, that we lightly touch the net or directly hang onto the net uh, on the block. It's because uh, sometimes we try to block too much, uh, we take risks uh, and it's also because we don't have uh, good technique. Some players uh, swing their arms on the block, uh, others don't have a good bounce technique. And if we make uh, these mistakes and uh, touch the net, uh, we can expect an immediate reaction from the referee, a whistle for an error. A mistake that will immediately cost us a point. I am sure you know it yourself. Uh, you don't want to be in the net uh, when you block. Uh, and when your team is in the net uh, five times in a set uh, or you jump into the net in the end of the set, these are big mistakes uh, that can cost you the win of a set or even the match. So watch your technique, uh, don't take uh, excessive risk and don't touch the net uh, when blocking. I believe uh, you want to avoid uh, these mistakes on the block, uh, you want to block better. I also hope that my advice on how to block better will help you to become a better player. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.